consumption. And we wanted places where children from different parts of the city and different cultures could meet and to, to learn and to interact with the things that they have in common. Uh, the, the UN Convention on the Right of the Child is common for all the children in the world and also the environment that they share. So we decided that we want to make places where children can play and learn about their own rights and also learn that my rights affect other children's rights. And we wanted also to create places where children can play and learn with toys. Because we asked children what would it, what do they like the like toys. So we decided to okay, like you have to have a place where you can play, where you can learn with the toy, but also if you want to change consumption consumption patterns, we want them to be able to swap toys with each other and also to instead of owning borrowing toys, lending toys. Uh, and not because uh, we have toy libraries in a lot of part, parts of the world, but uh, here in, in Sweden we have children that can afford all of the toys that they want, but the biggest, and, and that's a big challenge, but we also have a big challenge with all the children that overconsume toys. So we actually, and a lot of people ask, our, our first retoy we're opening is this really privileged area, and we always often get the question, why don't you open in this, this area where actually children need toys? And we always say, because the, the, the problem is that these rich, rich to uh, kids, kids, if you say that I live in that area too, or nearby, they're overconsuming. So it's not, I mean, we have, the both are really challenging, but the thing this, that's, this overconsumption is actually like making the future for all of us really insecure. So that's what I will explain to you. We have, you can see it here. So we decided if we wanted to, to work with the UN Convention on the Child, we have to live it too. So we uh, have an advisory board of children. Uh, they are like the biggest, they are amazing. Uh, that actually have been following the whole project and coming with the ideas and testing it. And, and it's really, it's really so clever because, I mean, they're the ones who are going to use it. And they really help us a lot in the whole thing. And it actually, one thing that also, when, when we involve the children, it makes us really responsible. I always, after those meetings, I feel like, oh, I really have to do this. Because you know, it's like, you, you create, um, I mean, I have my conscience and I have my founders and my partners, but when you promise a child something, it's really important to, to do it. Um, so they've been following the whole thing. And as I was saying, we have too much toys, that's why we're doing toy swapping and also being able to, to lend toys. But not any, yeah, and one other thing that we're trying to, I will explain. We will also have problems with the overconsumption, is that a lot of children we consume and we don't really, a lot of children living in the city don't really know what happens with things after. And with the way we overconsume in, in our part of the world, we also dump all our garbage somewhere else in the world uh, and don't see that things are really, it's like we're, we think in on a really naive way that if we put it there, we don't see it, it's not our problem, but everything is interlinked and it's gonna get back to us. And in one way or another. And I think it's also important to, to for children to think that it's like my rights and my earth are common. And we, I can do this to other children in another part of the world if I dump or just over consume and throw things in, in another part of the world. So what we are, we are now doing two things. One of the things that the, the toys that the children will be able to lend will, will be what we call sustainable toys. Toys that we know there are uh, produced with respect of human rights and also with respect of the environment. So what we're trying to say is that you're still going to own, own, own I can even talk here on top, <laughs> but when you consume, you have to think about what is it you're consuming and what kind of products. products. And we want to also to create a bigger demand for this kind of products. So it's like children ask, like we, uh, we would like to see like the next generation always thinks in one way, they, in, in which way the things that I consume here affect people in other parts of the world. And how many things should I consume and what, 
I can swap things, I can borrow things, but the things that I have, I really have to choose cho cho them and to make conscious choices. And the other thing that we're developing is, oh, it's impossible to see here. It's Box really with a screen on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I'm really, yeah, like this. I will explain it right now. Oh, but it's, oh. It's, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's really different. We created this, um, out of, lots of the products, most of them have this barcode. Uh -huh. And we're making, um, we're developing, like, to be able to follow a toy's life by reading the barcode. Bar so we think that one way of like getting more responsible is to actually think things in a different way. It's like, oh, where does, where does this come from? And the children can scan it in this place, and you say, okay, this is Coca-Cola, and it's, well, or something else. If you can read about the material, where in the world is it made? Where is it produced? How did it get here? And what happens when you, after you use it? What different kind of options do you have? You can recycle it, you can, just, I mean, it's, it's different with different products. But also to be able to like start uh, seeing the things in another way and feeling that everything has a life and the things that we use here actually have connections in different part of the world. Of the world. It's just, it's really dark, but here you can follow a toy's life to different places. And here, so when we, we started talking about that, we really, we wanted to, in one way, change a lot of things. We want to open this toy library, so we want to do, actually the challenge is that we want to do non-commercial things, but with quality, and to, we want to be able to reach a lot of children. And as a challenge, it always, uh, it's a lot of social entrepreneurs have that they think about mostly about the social and environmental part, but you have to be able to be sustainable in an economical way too. And at the beginning, sometimes it felt a little bit like this. Do you, can you see the picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you see? A woman yeah, trying to push a rock. A woman trying to push a rock? No, she's not trying, she's doing it. She's doing it. Or maybe keeping it from falling. Yeah. What do you see?